I can recall questions flooding my mind like, is this my fault? Have I done something wrong? What's home going to be like? Will I get to stay with my brother? Or who am I going to live with? Life as I knew it was actually about to change. Change drastically. And change is exactly what it did. You see, my parents were getting a divorce. Now I don't remember my parents setting my brother and I down and making this big official announcement about they're splitting up. I remember it more like my brother and I simply discovering that my mom wasn't coming back this time. My parents had separated before, but this time it was, it was a little different. This time, mom had been gone a lot longer than normal. Growing up in a split family was pretty difficult and at times quite frustrating. I can remember just being irritated for no reason sometimes. But looking back now, I can come to the overwhelming conclusion that God had a plan for my life all along. You see, God's love is so strong for us that He opens doors of opportunities, even during times of trials, suffering, and pain. These doors can, can actually lead us to a deeper relationship with God if we just step through them. This relationship that shows us what true love really is. See, instead of allowing divorce to set our standards for love, we allow God to set those standards. After all, 1 John 4, 8 says that God is love. Everything about God is love. His very nature, His DNA is love. Who better to learn from than the one who originated the idea? There are so many people being affected in our society today by divorce. And many of these people are even Christians. Here are some stats that will further show you the problems that we're facing today. Around 50% of marriages in the United States end in divorce. And those numbers are quite the same amongst other developed nations. In America, there's one divorce every 13 seconds. That's 6,646 divorces a day. And 46,523 divorces a week. Wow. Talk about an eye-opener. Many people at this point began to ask themselves the question, where do I go from here? What's life hold for me now? Learning how to pick up the pieces of your life and put them back together again after such thing happens and, and then to repurpose that for God's glory, it's not easy to do. It's quite hard to do. But it's what we have to do. It's what we must do. Now the question becomes, instead of what should I do now, where should I go from here, it becomes where does God want me to go from here? What is God's plan for my life now? How can God turn something that's broken into something that's beautiful? How can God turn something that looks bad and turn it into something that's good and used for His glory? Let's look at God's Word for a little bit of direction. In the book of Genesis, we read about a young boy who had dreams of being great. The boy was loved dearly by his father, so much so that his brothers became extremely jealous and decided to come up with a plan to get rid of him. By now, you probably know I'm talking about Joseph. Joseph's brothers developed this plan and thought, had thoughts of killing him, but instead they threw him into a pit and sold him into slavery. This would lead Joseph to Egypt, where he would actually go through more ups and downs. With God by his side, Joseph would become a great and powerful man in Egypt. Many years went by, and Joseph actually came face to face again with his brothers who had betrayed him. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, Joseph is assuring his brothers that he has no hard feelings toward them. And he says this, You planned something bad for me, but God produced something good from it. In the letter from the Apostle Paul to the church at Philippi, Paul is in a prison in Rome, actually chained to a guard. In Philippians 1, verses 12-14, through 14, Paul writes, But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become more confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. These two examples 
are amazing in that both God takes things that people meant for bad and were originally actually viewed by those involved as bad and He turns them into something awesome. Something that seemed broken to most people became something extremely useful to God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, Paul writes, For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made His light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. This passage screams at me. It says to me that when all things are said and done, this life, it's not about me. Jesus actually says in the book of Matthew, If anyone desires to come after me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life for, will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. This is God's story. It's all about Him. I'm simply blessed to have a role in it. So earlier I told you that I believed that God had a plan for my life all along. You see, my parents went through an ugly custody battle that lasted two years. That's right, I said two years. During that time, my grandparents were awarded temporary custody. See, my grandparents were great people who taught me right from wrong and even tried to tell me about God, even though I didn't listen all the time. Both my mom and dad quickly remarried, which made things even more difficult. My dad eventually won permanent custody of me and my brother, but by the age of 12, I had moved in with my grandparents for good. When I was 18, I started going to church. And on March 2nd, 2002, I was baptized into Jesus Christ and gave Him my life. I became a youth minister because I was a teenager who was lost and I needed direction in my life. And I know that there are other teenagers just like that, just like I was. I'm so thankful that somebody loved Christ enough and loved me enough to share the good news with me. How could I not do the same? I believe with all my heart that if I had been raised in any other way than with my grandparents, that I wouldn't even be sitting before you today. Again, God can take something that's a broken mess, like divorce, and He can turn it into something that's beautiful, that's an instrument for Him and used for His glory. Through divorce, I was able to learn that and understand what love doesn't look like. Now I know what true love really is. God. God is love. You see, God has a plan for your life and you don't want to miss it. I want to leave you with two verses that have changed my life and that give me courage to keep going even when times get tough. The first one is 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 9 and 10. It says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, and in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The other one is, is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, and yet without sin. I want to finish by saying one thing. Under no circumstances does God ever want divorce to happen. But let me make this very clear. Just because you face divorce in your life one way or another, it doesn't mean that God can't use you for His glory.